You made a very wise decision to join in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics today because we have Luana Rumo, Bengals defensive coordinator, talking about what took place against the Pittsburgh Steelers and what has taken place during the course of the season. A good start, a little bit of a lull that they're in right now. He's very honest, very frank, pulls no punches. Good information about the good and the bad. There have done some good things. Takeaways, red zone. I mean, you can give a list of uh, positives, but defending the run, yards in general. I mean, those kind of things uh, have to be improved upon and corrected for the Bengals to have a chance down the stretch here. And Lou Lou Anarumo talks about every bit of it and talks about every bit of it with complete honesty. You're going to enjoy it. Appreciate you taking time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, emanating from our outstanding studios. And we have a great guest <laughs> with you, with us, I should say, for you this morning. That is defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo, in my humble opinion, as good as there is in the business and the Bengals and the, everybody in, in Bengaldom. I should appreciate uh, this man's efforts because, in my mind, Head coach positions coming his way very, very quickly. There's going to be a lot of openings coming up here, and this, this gentleman is more than qualified for for that type of opportunity. Coach, appreciate you joining us, sir. Thanks, Lab. Thanks for having me. So, obviously, uh, tough sledding against uh, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers at uh, at Paycor. When you when you looked at the tape after the football game, what what struck you first and foremost? Well, you know, it's been our Achilles heel as of late. And, um, you know, it's these explosive plays that we've been giving up, uh, you know, both in the pass game and the run game. Um, You know, you you look at uh, their field goal drive there at the end, and it was, you know, a 22-yard run where we got somebody at the point of attack and then a 13-yard run uh, where we got to just get the guy on the ground and and then it's, you know, 0-0 kick a field goal. So... Um, or the previous drive where they, you know, hit a deep, deep go ball. And then again, it's, you know, two yards, three yards, kick field goal. So, um, you know, we, we just have to, um, you know, we have to buckle down on those things. Um, you know, certainly not give up as many yards as we're giving up. Um, we would be happy uh, with, uh, you know, one touchdown in the game, but that's not, that's not good enough. You know, they, they scored. 16 points, which uh, in that game was too much. Yeah, like you said, 16 points normally. I mean, if you hold a team to 17 or less in the National Football League, that's usually high high percentage of time you're gonna you're gonna win the football game. There's there's no question about it. I I guess the bright spot was in the red zone. They get there four times, and only get one touchdown out of it, and you get a takeaway, a turnover, you know, in the red zone. Now you've uh, held the, the opponent without a without a point in the red zone eight times, which is tied for the league lead. Um, and stopping people on fourth down like you have, takeaways like you have, that red zone efforts continue to be big, don't they? Yeah, it's, it has come up. Uh, that's been one of the constants throughout the uh, consistent things throughout the year. And, you know, we got to bring that into the rest of our game. You know, we certainly uh, could have done some things differently on my end uh, to help the guys out. And, uh, you know, it always starts with uh, – myself and and we you know trickle it down to the players and and making sure that um we're all on the same page which you know we always have been and and um you know that's that's no different right now but we just got to execute better takeaways in general uh there was one important one that red zone takeaway uh Bengals had a turnover as well in the red zone so kind of evened each other out and a net zero from a turnover standpoint but you've got 12 interceptions now in the season, tied for third most in the NFL. Seven fumble recoveries, tied for ninth in the National Football League. 19 takeaways, uh, tied for uh, seventh best in the National Football League. That's been another bright spot is uh, on a consistent basis throughout the season is is taking the football away and getting extra possessions for your offense. 
No, that the, the, our guys have definitely been aware of where the ball is and going after it and, and making the most of the opportunities when uh, when they present themselves. And no better example than Zach Carter the other day, where right. you know he's coming, he's playing off a block and sees the ball exposed, punches it out, and DJ was aware uh, to scoop and um, you know get going down the field. We got a couple of good blocks there. We're one we're one broken tackle away from taking it to the house. So <clears throat> you know <clears throat> that's that's a that's been a good thing. Uh, we certainly have to shore up. No, no surprise here. We got to shore up our run defense, which hasn't been what it's been here over the last few years. And um, you know, we've got to get back to playing the way we normally play against the run. So, is it uh, that age-old axiom, coach, of guys trying to do too much? I mean, the, I know the the type of players you have and the type of mentality and attitude they have. It's like I'm going to, you know, help my teammate, and and I know that's got to be tough. You know, I, okay, I've got the gap control here. Well, it doesn't look good over there. You know, maybe he needs some help, and now you go and maybe try to help him. Now be a son of a gun if they don't cut right where you were supposed to be. Uh, is, it, is it that kind of thing more so than mental errors? What do you think it is? Yeah, it's definitely not mental errors. The guys are in the right spots. <clears throat> um, it's more technique, a uh, little bit of what you're saying, where, you know, some at, at some point there's guys trying to do a little bit too much, but that that's really not the case. I can't pin it on that. It's, it's just a little bit of everything, and um, – but it gets back to technique and, uh, you know, guys being in the uh, lower pad level, just simple block destruction, getting off blocks uh, and then doing a good job tackling at the point of attack. So um, we need to get more ones and twos and zero rushes as opposed to falling forward for four, five and six. And and as, as the case, it's it's uh, normally never just one guy you know, no. that's doing it over and over. That's an easy solution. You're out and next guy in. It, different uh different culprits at different times that makes it very tough on you doesn't it yeah i just think it's uh i think we can all improve as i said you know starting with me and the coaches you know uh over we've we've we run fit things more than i've ever done and we'll continue to do that in practice but uh you know i think it's at every level up front starts with those guys uh to the linebackers to the dbs where everybody's you know just got to buckle down a little bit more and and uh making sure we're on it. And, and I know we will. We got – our guys are great, and uh, nobody's out there not trying to do it, trust me, on that. Okay. Um, and they take pride in it, and we just we just got to do better. DJ Turner played every snap, um, and, mm -hmm. and his his speed is is noticeable. And, and the, <laughs> no question about it. it, it jumps at you. And the play he made were never give up, you know, play to the whistle – Knocking that ball out of there in the back uh, back line of the uh, the end zone end zone was big overall. When you assess DJ Turner's play in that football game, what'd you see, Coach? Well, um, um you know, he's a rookie corner who's uh, been asked to play a ton of snaps, and uh, you know, we're we're excited about where DJ's uh, heading. I think every game is still there's some learning uh, that's going on for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be better at this point. He'll be way better at this point next year, um, you know, just because of the experience. But, uh, you know, he's got a, he's got a ton of confidence. Uh, guys are going to give up some plays in this league uh, at that position. Uh, but DJ, you know, he's very, very confident, um, and that's a good thing. And, you know, he had the one nine ball that, that they caught on him, but, he, you know, he came over to me right on the bench. He said, hey, the next one I'm picking off, you know. So he's got that in him, which is great. Uh, you know, some other guys, you know, may not have that where they, you know, they lose their confidence, but DJ is going to be just fine. And I'm, I'm pleased and happy that he's with us. Boy, when the, uh, the, the, when he scooped the fumble, I thought, oh man, scoop and score. Maybe, you know, he's, he's got so much speed, but too many guys had, had, uh, too good an angle on him, but that, that was a, that was a good play as well. I mean, he seems to have, you know, a nose for sometimes the ball finds guys, you know, he seems to have a nose like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He's, uh, he's really coming on in that regard. And, and like I said before, just playing with a ton of confidence. Jordan Battle Coach, um, <clears throat> this guy is a, is a tackler. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a good trait to have at the, at the safety position. How's he done? I know he had that 11 tackle game, 10 of them unassisted uh, the, the, the game before. How did, how did it go for him in the Pittsburgh game? Uh, yeah, same thing, you know, had a bunch of tackles. Uh, I think, uh, there's still some things we can uh, continue to improve on, but, uh, he's in the last couple of games, he's shown that he can come in and, uh, be a solid tackler. He's been a pretty good blitzer as well. Um, so, you know, we'll keep uh, rolling the way we have it right now. 
man, I'll tell you, and I know you can't, you can't comment on this. It's, uh, you know, but it, it had to be unbelievably frustrating to see the uh, flagrant hold that occurred against Jermaine Pratt in the red zone. Cause you guys are so good in the red zone. It's like, man, to let that guy, let that hold take place at the point of attack, bear hug and turn a guy, and, uh, and back bounces it for a touchdown, and there's a flag immediately. And I, I mean, I'm like, oh, good, they got the hold. Then they pick the sucker up. I, I, uh, that had to stun everybody on the sideline. Yeah, you know, we had two guys uh, that uh, Jermaine was going to kind of funnel the ball back inside, and Dax and DJ Ivy had, had to go in there for a snap, and they were kind of both inside waiting for the ball to go up inside uh and then uh, you know it bounced outside and you know like you like you said the flag got picked up so we just had to play you know we had to move on from there those kind of things are uh are unfortunate unfortunate to say the least when you uh pick it honestly i i thought he had his best game of the season in terms of throwing the deep ball i mean he was extremely there was good coverage on, on just about every one of those deep balls, I mean, a- adequate coverage and sometimes sometimes even better than adequate, and he just put it in good spots, didn't he? Well, he made two good throws for sure on the yeah. uh, nine, nine ball to uh, on DJ uh, Deontay Johnson, and then in yep. the inside fade to uh, fourteen. So uh, both good. Mike was in in, in pretty good coverage too, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we got to get those balls out. So uh, Friermuth, for him to come back, he had he had a big day. Uh, <laughs> what what went wrong in, in that in that area trying to take uh, take care of the tight end? Well, uh, a couple of things. You know, we started uh, on a one of the first third down of the game uh, where you know we should have stayed up on him, and we kind of came off and just had a really uh, lapse in judgment on that one, um, and that was a. 30 yard gain, um, you know, the first play of the game, again, we could have insulated it a little bit better where we were in zone. Um, and then, you know, from there, it was just a matter of changing up, trying to change different people on him. Um, you know, and he was getting some check downs and turning it into, you know, instead of six or eight, it became 11 or 12. So there was some of that. Um, and we had a miscommunication on one of his man to man pickups where we could have put ourselves in better position and we, and we didn't. So, uh, yes, clearly too many yards, uh, too many uh, completions to him, uh, but credit to them for that. So Canada is is let go and there's co-coordinators. And boy, how, how different is the offense going to be? Uh, what will they emphasize maybe? What will they tweak? What did you see, Coach? How different was the offense that Matt Canada was running as opposed to the offense you saw post-Canada? Well, probably a little less pre-snap motion um, that, that than they had been. Um, but the core players are their core plays that they've been running for years. Um, you know, and uh, Coach uh, Sullivan did a good job. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, it was a lot of what they've done. Yeah, I didn't see that jet motion. They, they were running that a ton. I didn't see as much, a, as much of that for, for sure. Let's, let's move on uh, after the Pittsburgh Steelers game. Now you've now you got to go to Jacksonville for a Monday night football game. Uh, you know, and, and everybody talks about, the quarterback who's the first pick of the draft and rightfully so i mean lawrence is a is a special talent but man they, their running game i mean at atn uh is a guy that uh he's seventh in the league in rushing seventh in rushing touchdowns with seven of them fifth in scrimmage yards tied for third and in, in first downs that guy's kind of the straw that serves the drink a little bit isn't he a really good football player They're, they've got a ton of weapons uh with their receiving core uh, you know, start again, another good tight end, Evan Ingram, who uh, I was with at the Giants, uh, no Evan, um, you know, Christian Kirk in the slot, Ridley and, uh, th- that they have also, um, you know, and again, as you mentioned, the back and, you know, and the quarterback has done a really, really good job. So uh, their own line is good. Uh, they're, they're a good football team. They're a very good explosive offense. Yeah, that, uh, that, that old line, it, it sounds like, uh, and, I, and I don't know if that's going to be the case, but early in the week, it sounds like some guys were were banged up a little bit. Uh, Cam Robinson, first and foremost, they were talking about Walker Little going out there to, to left tackle and Ezra Cleveland maybe moving into the guard spot. But Scherf, I know, has been around a while. They have a rookie at uh, the tackle position, Harrison, that is highly regarded coming out. They're pretty good up front, aren't they? They're very good. They play well together. They're well coached. Uh, they protect the quarterback. And 
you know, they move people in the run game. So there's a reason why they're scoring all these points. I did uh, I did see though, looking at their at their numbers, they've been a little uh, loose with the football. They put it on the ground 19 times, tied for fifth most in the NFL, and they've lost 11 of them, which was uh, second most in the National Football League. So uh, you know maybe uh, maybe that turnover. A turnover mentality that you guys have getting after that football as well as tackling the guy. Maybe that'll pay dividends for you down there. Yeah, it's going to have to be big. You know, we're going to have to, you know, come away with this game with uh, multiple takeaways, and that's the plan. So takeaways, red zone, gap control, just just all the basics, right? The ABCs of football. That's that's yeah. the deal. Yeah, it doesn't ever change, you know. Uh, good defense uh, to, a, to a defense that's not playing as well. You can always – fall back on the, the core fundamentals that, you know, we're teaching um, since, you know, back in the spring. And uh, we've got to continue to emphasize those things. The good news about our, our crew of guys and our crew of men in the locker room, you know, they don't, they don't flinch. They're out there giving their all every snap and uh, we'll continue to do that. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully come away with a big win this sun, uh, Monday night. No question, coach. It looks like Logan Wilson's ankle injury, I mean, I saw him walking around the locker room pretty well, and that's not playing football. That's not running. But, I mean, I, it, it looked encouraging. It looked like it might not have been as bad as, as it could have been. Hopefully he'll be able to make the dance. Cam Taylor Britt maybe make the dance for you. That's all questionable as the week goes on. But they're yeah. trending in the right direction, do you think? Well, hopefully the extra day will help. Uh, you know, um, we'll see. You know, it's still early in the week. But, uh, you know, we're hopeful. We'll see how it goes. Coach, once again, can't thank you enough. Uh, candid, honest, as always, and uh, put together a great one. Take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, knock them around a little bit on Monday Night Football, Coach. Sounds good, Lap. Thanks for having me. Appreciate your time as always, sir. Yep, thank you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, Leadership and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.